I really remember designing from a really young age, but I started drawing clothes, I think when I was 12 or 13 years old. I grew up in Paris and my dad is French, my mom is Chinese American, so I grew up bilingual and with this multicultural heritage and upbringing. And I was just like a very insecure, nerdy little kid. I didn't have a lot of friends and I believed that if I found like the right pair of jeans or the, or the right sweatshirt um, that it would sort of transform me and that it would make people see me differently. You know, the myth of Pygmalion and this idea that you can sort of transform yourself through your appearance. And I was also, you know, I was like a uh, closeted, like, you know, gay teenager. And I think, you know, a lot of my idols growing up were designers. I didn't have a lot of gay people around me. And generally the sort of world of fashion represented this freedom and this acceptance that I really craved. When I went back to Paris to see my parents, I went through all of these old boxes that I hadn't seen in years, and I found all of these notebooks, and I'd been, I guess, designing, and a lot of this I forgot. This is basically a press release, or like a book about my life as a designer. But in this book, I'm famous. I made up all of these weird things. Like, this is a dress that I designed for Mariah Carey. Simple and elegant. The third and fourth collection were never released in public because of the charges against Calvin Klein, a close friend. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. There is kind of a really beautiful thing about looking back at old designs and thinking about that like 13 year old, like super nerdy kid. And then looking at my life now and realizing, you know, how far I've come and how a lot of what I wished for has actually come true. You know, I think a lot of my life has been about trying to find my people. And with Altuzara, I think I've really found who those people are. They're really, I mean, people I care deeply, deeply about. At the very best, when you have a great team like that, you actually create this kind of symbiotic relationship with each other where you are kind of thinking like one brain. You're all sort of iterating on each other's thoughts and ideas. I've always been really, really attached to my home. I'm like a total homebody. I always have been. I'm a pretty superstitious person. I'm also a very anxious person, but I need things around me that make me feel like they're bringing me good luck. I put on these rings every morning and I didn't used to wear so many of them. They all sort of represent when something meaningful happened in my life. Most of them are tied to my family and to Seth, my husband, and to Emma, my daughter. People would tell me before having a baby, like, oh, it's gonna change everything. It's sort of trite, but it does change a lot. I mean, when you're in your sort of early 20s and you're trying to find your way in the world, I think that you're so focused on, you know, your identity and who you are and um, what that means professionally. And I think the more time goes by, the more I realize how important family is. It made me think about what I do for a living very differently. You know, if I'm feeling especially drained or if I'm feeling especially stressed, I think going for a walk is one of those activities that just helps me recharge, refuel, find the center again. I've lived in New York for almost 15 years now. I think there's this kind of freedom in New York and this, this kind of openness that I find so refreshing. My work is very much inspired by my life and what I designed 13 years ago is really different from what I design now. And I've sort of come to realize a lot of it is about what I'm sort of internalizing and the emotions that I'm feeling um, and how I'm expressing that through the clothes. And so 
going for a walk is really recharging. Like it's a very centering experience for me. Basically what I do when I design is that I am telling a story. And I think stories are essentially what inspire me the most. I don't necessarily always know what I'm looking for. I think I'm just looking for something that will make me feel strongly and sort of give me this sense of emotion that I'm always looking for. Sometimes it's just that you, you see something that is just, that sort of stirs something in you. At the end of a really long day, I come home, I obviously spend a lot of time with, with Emma and with Seth, and Seth usually goes to bed before I do, and then I spend about like two hours just reading, and that's kind of my time. When I started out in this business, I was so focused and obsessed with getting to that end goal that I had set for myself, and I've really learned to enjoy the I think the journey and the process more. I think I found really nice balance in my life, just of, of work and of personal life and me time. And that feels really good.